Yeah. Hi, Archie. Can I help you? Fine. Goodbye. <laughs> well, that was weird. Um. Oops. Let's see. Okay. Uh, well, hello. Uh, welcome back. That was I. Sorry, this is, I woke up and Archie's cat, like, he just bolted in. Anyway, you're not here for that. That's pretty clear. Um, but anyway, what we're going to do today is, and over the next series of modules, this is actually two units worth, or modules of Freud. I call them the Freud unit and the post-Freud unit, but more formally, uh, we're going to cover the basics of psychoanalysis first, and next we will, uh, what is this? Yeah. Next we'll cover, and then post, and then modern psychoanalysis. And so we've got lots of major objectives here. But before we go into these, you are likely asking yourself, why are we doing Freud? He's like a billion years old. And Mason's a pretty practical professor, so why? Why Freud? It just seems so out of sync. And every time I teach this class, I debate whether to include the Freud stuff or not. And to prepare for lectures, I reread the textbook. And every semester, kind of the preamble to the Freud unit like is David Funder's motivation for including it, that it's a foundational piece, that it's kind of a key essential element, that it lays the foundation for most of modern psychology. And so every semester I get convinced by reading the textbook that I probably should include it. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, the Just the basic objectives here. We're going to discuss the basic ideas of psychoanalysis. Um, we'll discuss, and when I say that the key ideas of psychoanalysis, I'm talking like psychic determinism, internal structure, psychic conflict, and mental energy, also known as libido. There's going to be lots of like super awkward phrases that I hope you enjoy as I cringe through them. And so that fun, I hope. But yeah, so we'll do that. We'll talk about uh, Freud's theory of psychological development. I will only go through the broad swathes of it because we have modern theory that is accurate. Well, Freud's is kind of like, eh, like the stages are among the most uncomfortable phrasings ever too. Like we've got the oral stage, the anal stage, the phallic stage. It's going to be a fun, fun unit. So we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about Freud's ideas of how the mind is structured. Uh, we'll discuss uh, slips and humors. And uh, while slips are funny, these are not the like haha -ha slips, like banana peel. Uh, we'll discuss anxiety and defense mechanisms and wrap up with implications for psychotherapy in modern life. I'm going to focus as much as I can on the so the Freudian stuff that you didn't cover in intro that's actually relevant to personality and lays a foundation, frankly, for the next unit where we talk about what modern stuff still uses Freud. They don't call it that Freud, but they use it. And so, like, we'll get there. Okay, so Freud himself, for the, like, one human being on the entire planet, you who is unaware, and that's, it's totally okay, it's just his, his say, like he's very salient in Western culture and Western media. So this dude, the medical doctor, he actually was pretty bad at math, so he avoided it and he thought medicine would be easier. Uh, he left Austria when Hitler came to power in 1933 and fled to England, but before that, he was in Austria, which was kind of this bastion of liberalism, like Vienna. The city of Vienna was kind of this cool bastion of relative liberalism. But 
probably the biggest reason why Freud left Austria was he was Jewish. And being Jewish or just, it's less advertised, but being Jewish or Romani or really anything that wasn't like super German, you're going to have a bad time in uh, Nazi Germany. Understatement of the season. I apologize to all my ancestors and kin who had a bad time. I don't mean to make light of it, but it's what I do when I find things uncomfortable. So there's going to be lots of light in this unit. All right. So Freud started out as this research neurologist. He noticed that uh, patients who simply talked about their problems improved. Like the talking cure is what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. And... So he essentially became a psychiatrist as a result because he found that talking worked. And so most of his work revolves around that. Now, he also believed that, and this is likely because of his background in war-torn Europe, that war proved that people are aggressive and destructive. So that theme's going to come up. And I, I talk about Freud himself as a person to give you some context because theory and like the ideas of psychology, you can try and like this pretend that they have no historic context, but you probably should just because it gives you some extra flavor of what's going on, what's the norm, what isn't typical. So you can kind of interpret modern, like so modern interpretations of older theory are helpful. Uh, so also, fun fact, so while there are not many uh, psychoanalysts, or men, there are only a handful in psychology, and they're, they're retiring out. Uh, psycho, psychoanalysis is super popular as a hum, in the humanities as like a lens through which to interpret writing, which I find really fascinating. And so it's more like most student coverage of like Freud and like the theory and the reason comes from the humanities, not from psych psychology. Okay, so Freud himself, the, um, the, the basic mechanism here that he used to like essentially facilitate the talking cure was free association. And it's this idea, and you likely kind of experienced this in any media, like stereotypical media piece of like what it means to be a psychiatrist where you've got like the super Austrian sounding dude with a big beard and he says tell me about your mother and you sit on a couch and lay back I will see if I can get a fair use or a like public domain example I do have some audio of his voice uh, from 1940 41 like it's six months before he died and it's in English so you can just just to get it hear him which I thought was kind of I started my professional activity as a neurologist trying to bring relief to my neurotic patients. Under the influence of an older friend and by my own efforts, I discovered some important new facts about the unconscious in psychic life, the role of instinctual urges, and so on. Out of these findings grew a new science, psychoanalysis, a part of psychology, as a new method of treatment of the neurosis. I had to pay heavily for this bit of good luck. People did not believe in my facts and thought my theories unsavory. Resistance was strong and unrelenting. In the end, I succeeded. In acquiring blueprints and building up an international 
Psychoanalytic Association. But the struggle is not yet over. Treatment Freud. But anyway, so free association is the patient says whatever comes to mind, which those of you who endure my lectures and don't find them quirky and entertaining likely feel like that's what's happening here. It is, I have a script, I swear, um, where people get to talk about difficult topics and kind of just say whatever comes to mind. Now, the talking cure, I've, I've danced it and talked about it, is here's the explicit definition, here's the basic idea. You make thoughts and fears explicit so the conscious, rational mind can deal with them. And therapists are there to provide emotional support while the patient tries to figure out what is going on. So it's a lot of like self-analysis is what's happening. Now Freud, uh, a lot of his theories, and we'll talk about those soon, uh, were influenced by his patients. A lot of his patients were like well-to-do suburb, well, well-to-do, blah, blah, blah. Well-to-do Viennese women who often reported sexual abuse by their fathers. Now, Freud, because he, and usually these were like people at least associated with his broader network in some way, so he was usually friends or acquaintances with their fathers, which was a little awkward. And so a lot of Freudian theory, at least this is my interpretation, is partially to come to terms with the fact that uh, his patients suffered abuse, but instead of actually realizing that it was actual abuse and just viewed it as like a psychological mechanism that everybody wants to bang their dad. That's awkward quote number one. Or not even. There's going to be so many of you. Need to... But the point is that uh, some of Freud's theories are to grapple with this phenomenon that he experienced. And so his sample of people was not representative, obviously, but so his theories were influenced by his patients. And, and, you know, that's fine. Like you have to, data, your theories have to come from somewhere, but he kind of reinterpreted, like he, he was just convinced that it was an actual abuse. And so a lot of this is just grappling with like that phenomenon and how to explain I mean, not all of it, but a decent, sizable chunk. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Oh, look, so I'm going to break, I'm trying to break this module down as much as possible. So as you can see here, uh, next time we're going to talk about the key ideas. Now, don't get, don't get too worried here. It's not that I've made more content. It's just I'm slicing it up more so where there are nice logical breaks. And in Freud, there are lots of nice logical breaks. So that's what I'm going to do. So I will see, or you'll see me in a bit. Uh, but uh, yes, because next time we're going to talk about those key ideas. So bye-bye.